Hi everyone, welcome to today's Q&A every Monday through Friday right here on TikTok Immigration Lawyer John is the handle. It, today is May 28th. Let me, let me double check to see what day today is. You kind of lose track when you're in quarantine. May 28th, it's a Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific. Welcome to all, all those who are joining to go over general questions about the immigration law, what's going on with coming to the United States, and the process for getting visas. We do this again every day, Monday through Friday. Please join us primarily on TikTok. It's Immigration Lawyer John. I'm on Facebook as well, JKK Law Firm. And the cool thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be switching up the Facebook feed to include the Instagram Live and the YouTube Live. So to uh, be having a schedule how that works so people in those other social media avenues and venues can also join and ask questions that pop up. As a reminder, this is general education only. You should consult with an immigration attorney about your case in private uh, if you have questions. Results vary, it's always different, and uh, also this is considered an attorney advertisement, so be aware of that. If you did want to schedule a consultation with my office, please email me, and we'll have a direct consultation to go over your case and review your documents. Just send me an e email first, info at jqklaw.com, and briefly describe the immigration issue that you have, so I can see if it's a type of case my office handles, uh, there is a fee involved in that consultation. So uh, as people are trickling in, please ask questions and have them ready. I want to talk about some other topics until people get ready. Uh, one important thing that I noticed is a lot of marriage I-130 I petitions. These are when a U.S. citizen applies for their spouse to start the green card process and the spouse is overseas. Uh, there's different service centers that handle these. So when you mail the USCIS your I-130 petition, um, they, they spread out these cases into four or five different uh, service centers that, that process these and look over to approve or deny or request for evidence, all that kind of stuff. Uh, most of them are, are completing these pretty fast, between three, four, five, six months. Uh, but I was checking this morning, and cases that are going to the Nebraska Service Center, unfortunately, are taking 12 and a half to, I don't know, 16 and a half months. It's just kind of crazy that it's taking this long. It's kind of unfair. Uh, I wish they wouldn't make it like that. I wish they would fix the situation up so we don't have that. I have a lot of clients waiting, uh, you know, their families overseas, they want things to happen. And it's really surprising that uh, this kind of delay is happening. So that's just something I want to be prepared for. I want you to be prepared for uh, that there's a big inconsistency how these go. And that's why inevitably we're going to get a couple of questions about this. How long does this take? Well, if your I-130 goes to the Texas Service Center, it might be done in four or five months. If it goes to the Nebraska Service Center, it might take one year, one year and a half. So as you can see, when you can't answer that question without knowing exactly where the case is being sent to, and we don't really know where, before filing which location is going to get it. They kind of divvy it up and make a decision themselves, and then we know. And even with that, even though it says Nebraska Service Center takes between 12 months and a year and a half, it could still get done in three, four months, or it could get done in two years. And there's complete inconsistency as to how the timelines work for the immigration system, which makes it very hard to even guess what's going to happen, putting aside the whole coronavirus situation where not everyone's going to work, the embassies are shut down, USAS interviews are shut down, all the mess of things that are happening. Um, you, just, you can't really prepare for what's happening other than just preparing for the worst, hoping for the best, and being patient. Uh, that's the name of the game when you're dealing with the U.S. immigration system. And now they're saying they're running out of money. I don't know how true it is. They do blow a lot of money unnecessarily, uh, but they've blown through the fees. You all paid them for your cases, and they're saying we're going bankrupt. We need more money. Who knows if it's true or not? Who knows if they use the money wisely? Uh, but that's going to be another excuse to say, well, we have to furlough people. We can't afford it. We're going to have to raise the fees now as well, yada, yada, yada. This is the kind of situation you're going to have to deal with with U.S. immigration in the coming years. Uh, and that's what we have to do. So user 307, thank you so much for sharing the feed live on TikTok. I would love it if more people know, more people join, ask questions. We'll continue doing these live Q&As. As long as people are there and have questions, uh, I'll be happy to jump in and try to help those out. It's 5 p.m. Pacific to 5.30, half an hour session, Monday through Friday. The video recording of this is put on YouTube for the JQK Law Firm, so you catch it there. And I also take clips and other information stuff and put on JQK Law, the YouTube page, but also, um, you might go to uh, you know the Instagram page for JK Law, where I have uh, copies of approval notices that have timelines as well and other information. So Hamza asks, is it worth filing the K3 with an I-130? Let me break down what the K3 is. The, the short answer is no, it's generally not worth it. Well, worth is relative. It means what you mean by worth. So uh, a, when you have a, a marriage green card case pending, so you're a U.S. citizen filing an I-130 for a foreign spouse, it used to take a long time, more than a year. I, I, just, I was talking about earlier, Nebraska Service Center is taking over a year. But usually it gets done by six or seven months. 
because it was taking so long, they created this other thing called a K3 visa. Uh, the K1 is a fiance, but K3 is a spouse of US citizen who has an I-130 case pending. Uh, for the last 10, 15 years, it was completely not worth it to do because the I-130s would be adjudicated and decided so quickly, the K3 would never even come up. So no, generally it wasn't worth it, but nowadays with the timelines getting longer, as we're seeing with the Nebraska Service Center, it just might be worth doing, so that's that. Now there are issues with that as well. Uh, first of all, uh, there is no filing fee for the K3, so money-wise, um, you don't, it's not that, you know, not a loss really. If you hire an attorney, there may be attorney fees to help you with that. So that's one positive. But on the other end, if the K3 is approved, the foreign spouse does the embassy interview, comes to the United States, then has to file for adjustment of status from within the United States. So there's still more process and more time to get a green card. Um, so if you're really in a rush to see each other to get the foreign spouse here so you're together as a family, yeah, K3 is probably going to be worth it if it was going to work out. But uh, if, if it's not that much of a rush and the person is going to come here, if they get a K3 and have to wait and wait to get a work permit, wait to do this and that, and it's going to cause problems in the family and the household, then yeah, maybe it's not worth doing. So uh, when you ask, is something worth doing, it depends on the facts of your case and your background to judge whether it is, not a general question. It's always different for everyone. Historically, immigration lawyers have not been filing the K3, uh, but if you're in a rush and you don't mind your spouse coming here and I have a work permit for a while and having to file for adjustment status, more legal fees, maybe doing an interview, all this kind of stuff, then, then maybe it's not a problem. So it really depends on your personal situation, but those are the some of the pros and cons of requesting a K-3 visa. Okay, so we had a question here. What do you think about international students? I think they're fine. They're, they're good people. Please uh, be more specific in what you mean about what do you think about. Uh, I don't have a personal opinion about international students. God bless them. Come here, study, uh, get good grades, and, and that's it. <laughs> Um, Kosa asks, um, hi, what do you think about F1 visa opportunity? Again, you have to be more specific. Uh, what do you mean why I think? You could try to apply for it, come here and study. It's a personal decision if you want to come here and study. I don't have an answer for what you're asking, uh, what I think about. Uh, it's a good opportunity if you like it. Um, like job opportunities. When F1 is a student visa, it's not a work visa. So it has nothing to do with job opportunities. Uh, the goal is to come study here and eventually go back to your home country and take your skills there. If in the meantime when you're here you find a job, it's one thing. But you ask a very general question. If you're coming here to study English, um, it's, I know it's not that many job opportunities, but if you're here and you're studying some sort of complex physics and some scientific foundation wants to hire you, yeah, there's a good job opportunity. So job opportunities are really good for some people and not good for others. So these are very difficult general questions you're asking. You should have a mentor or a counselor in private so that they can get to know you and what you're trying to do to answer a question like that. It's not really made for a general forum like this uh, where we have in no information about what you're looking for. So let's move on. Saifa asks, what about the N-400? So the N-400 is the citizenship naturalization uh, application when you want your green card holder. Over time you file for citizenship. You can file those. Um, the interviews are going to be restarting soon. Um, yesterday, and if you go to my social media pages, you'll see I just got an oath ceremony for a client of mine whose oath ceremony has been on hold due to COVID-19. Finally got a schedule. It's coming up in two or three weeks in Los Angeles. So they're, they're working. You should, if you have an appropriate case, you should file. But consult with an immigration attorney first uh, to see what's going on. Um, okay, Hamza asks, I filed for, this is a person I think originally asked, I filed the I-130 petition with Nebraska on March 2020, K-3 worth. I, I explained already, it's up to you. If you want to have a private consultation to see what's worth it to you, please email me and uh, we could break it down. There are fees associated with this, probably half an hour consultation, but please email me and we could discuss that there. I don't talk about fees in this forum. It wouldn't be appropriate, but uh, that's the. I, I think I gave you a pretty thorough answer already. But thank you for following and asking your questions. Please uh, like and follow the different uh, you know social media pages I have for more info. Uh, Kosha asks asylum case update. Again, the, these questions you're asking are too too broad, Kos. Um, you know, everyone's asylum case is different. They are opening up for interviews. That's the most update there is, but that's that. You're welcome, Safi. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, please follow if you haven't already for the TikTok page as well as on YouTube and on Facebook and other places so you get this information and spread the word to know I'm here uh, and I'm here to help, help and answer questions. Hiro asks, for F2B file categories, how long will it take to come to the United States? I described this earlier about these issues of the timeline, so I can't answer how long it'll take. The F2B category is uh, an adult child of a green card holder. If you go to the visa bulletin chart, it'll give you a general timeline. 
but those timelines jump forward and backward really uh, really big uh, and it depends on what country you're from if you're subject to a travel ban if you have financial issues for the uh, FAA to support so there's so many different factors that I cannot answer a question where you ask how much time it takes but please uh, you know look at the visa bulletin and I'll give you a general understanding there uh, if you wanted to schedule a private consultation I could give you more a somewhat more uh, exact answer but I need to talk with you explain with you and review your specific case see which country you're from all this kind of stuff where the foreign person is uh, your foreign child is and we could take it from there uh, Arwin asked hey is the interview for I-360 hard do they ask about the abuse I don't handle I-360 abuse cases so I, I'm not good research for that if you ask it's hard it depends you know um, if, if it's an on, I don't, I don't understand hard, you know, if it's a, there's no hard or easy, it's just an interview, they ask you questions, that's about it. Um, if it's truthful, just be truthful and be honest. If you're really worried, um, you know, hire an attorney, practice, go to the interview with you, the attorney, uh, if that's required. I'm not sure if, if interviews are required, uh, but it's not about easy or hard, it's just like, you know, it's just a situation you have to deal with. But thanks for asking, I hope, I hope that helped a little bit, and thanks for following on, on TikTok. Uh, you know, the TikTok page is Immigration Lawyer John. That's the best place to ask these kind of questions. If you want to schedule a, qu a consultation, email me. A lot of people connect with me on Instagram asking questions. I can't answer private questions in a private closed place like that without a consultation. It has to be a full-on consultation or just general questions here for the broad audience. Um, that's just general education. So Martha asks, I've been trying to make payment with National Visa Center but getting an error. Do you know what uh, there I say payment? So this issue with the National Visa Center, I'm glad you brought this up. It's a, been a big headache for m many years really, but recently a lot of my colleagues have been having this issue. I haven't had it recently, but every computer system is different with the NBC. Where um, someone is at the stage of their green card case where they're dealing with the embassy, they're uploading documents to them. And to start that phase, they have to start paying some fees. But the fees don't work. They keep trying to pay and it doesn't work. It used to be as a backup, you would mail them a check, but they don't want you mailing their stuff anymore either. So what you probably do is go to the Contact Us page for the National Visa Center uh, and fill it out and say, hey, I can't submit the fees. Please fix the system or give me guidance on if I can mail a check or what to do because I can't pay the fees so I can't get the process started. Unfortunately, yeah, this is a regular pro problem that's happening for a lot of uh, people filing the case. Uh, try contacting them to push them to try to help you out so you can move the payment process forward and just keep rechecking the site. It might reboot and fix itself on its own. But yes, it is a typical issue we see with fee payment for the National Visa Center. Another problem you're going to find is if you submit documents to the National Visa Center, once you submit all the documents and you submit it, um, they may come back and have a comment on those. And you click on the message box for the National Visa Center to read the comment and it won't load. You'll be clicking it, you'll be on there for 20, 30 minutes and nothing will load. Uh, and then eventually it'll pop up or just have to do it days on it until it finally shows. Uh, the computer system for SEAC, CEAC, the electronic system for uploading documents to the National Visa Center, paying them, all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, it's not a robust system. It cracks and breaks under the pressure uh, and it's a big headache. Another problem you might have with SEAC is you're filling out the form DS-260, the application for a green card, and it'll, it'll all of a sudden time you out or you come to save it and it won't save and you lost all the information. This is most annoying when you're filling out your address history. So when you fill out the address history, you might have moved around five or six times. When you come to place next or save, it crashes and it says nothing saved. And you just want to get your computer and throw it, break it on the ground. So uh, that's the kind of situation I deal with uh, and that's what I deal with every day when you're dealing with content processing. But be patient, it's not just you. It's a, it's a problem that's consistently across the board. FCON asks, my case is a K-1, this is a fiancé visa. I got a mail from an immigration office. Okay, um, I, I, what is your question? Please ask your, I said, uh, it just said we got your documents. Okay, so when you submit a case to the immigration office, USCIS, uh, they give you a receipt, um, so as proof that, to, first of all, they took the money for the case and that they started processing your case. And it also has a case receipt number, so you can go to USCIS.gov and try to track the case or if you need to contact USCIS like by calling them, use that receipt number for them to identify your case. So that's perfectly normal. Now you gotta wait for either get an approval notice or a request for evidence or sometimes a straight denial. It just depends on how well you did the paperwork, how you documented it, and who the officer is that's handling it. Are they professional? Do they know what they're doing or not what they're doing? A lot of these things happen. Martha, you're welcome. Thanks for asking your question. Kos asks, uh, in an asylum case, I got my work permit, what next? All right, Kosa, you asking a lot of questions, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> but what's next is, you know, you wait for your interview. That's it. It might take a while. FCON asks, uh, they give a number for that as well. 
Um, they gave a number for that. Yeah, so yeah, this is all the information you need on the receipt. Just be patient. And COSA as well, just be patient. Uh, you have an asylum case pending. And you just wait for your asylum interview. Um, hopefully, uh, if you move, you update the address. Hopefully, you did the paperwork right so the case doesn't get rejected or you get an RFE, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully, you had an attorney helping you that was thorough, uh, that cared, and, and that helped you with that. Uzomi asked, any idea when Social Security Administration opens to the public? Um, you know, I'm not a government agency. I can't speak on their behalf, nor do I follow up on what's going on with the Social Security Office. For information like that, you should call them and ask them on when they're going to have their processing opening up. Uh, that's the best you can do. Farhad asked, how is the interview for a 10-year green card? Um, well, Farhad, uh, what I'm assuming is you got a two-year conditional green card and now you're removing conditions to get a 10-year green card. The cases I file for removal conditions never have interviews because we document it well. Um, but if they do call for an interview, it's usually because they don't trust something that's going on with your case. So it's a little bit of a harder interview where they're going to meet with you, the spouse, ask you a lot of questions, and maybe separate you to ask questions if an interview does come up. In those kind of cases, for sure it's better. You should, and I recommend having an immigration attorney that's seasoned, knows what they're doing, and who cares with you to watch out what's going on because they're not trusting an aspect of your case, and so they need to overcome that doubt that the officer has uh, for them to be able to approve the 10-year green card after having a two-year green card. So they're really looking at your relationship. They want to know it wasn't a lie, and so be prepared for that. Um, okay, so... Let's see, we got another question here somewhere. Okay, so um, yeah, some good questions actually. Uh, I appreciate uh, what you guys have been asking, a little bit different, which is good. Sometimes you ask the same questions over and over, I answer the same question over and over again. Uh, I like hearing new stuff. Uh, Martha asked, I submitted the I-130 years ago, never got mail back, checked online, it was approved. Do I need the actual approval? You don't need the actual approval notice, but you don't want, after the case is approved, if you take too long to contact the National Visa Center, they'll close out the case and they'll be closing it to restart the process. And this is one of the important reasons of having a lawyer on the case because the lawyer also gets a copy of everything. So there's some secondary eyes on it. Uh, so you want to immediately find out what's going on with the case with the National Visa Center, if there's a case number associated with it, if you need to pay any fees. So Martha, definitely consult with the lawyer to see what happened. You don't want the case to just be denied for inactivity. That could be a serious issue that has come up in these kind of situations. I don't know the exact details of the case, what kind of I-130 it is and because of that I can't give more detailed information because I have to look up the, and different factors to be able to give a, a guidance on that which I can't do here uh, but yeah definitely consult an immigration attorney have them review the paperwork and what you sent and go over your case with you and the foreign family member uh, and then they could break down what you need to do to be better prepared if you'd like to contact my office my email is info at jqklaw.com and we can schedule probably half an hour consultation with you and the foreign family member to review what's going on, what's next, and try to catch any red flags that may exist or prepare now for what's to be coming up in the future. There's a lot of issues with the public charge rule coming, so the sooner you prepare for that, the better. Like one thing I'm is I'm telling clients that they're gonna go through consular processing, the foreign person can go give a TOEFL test or an English language test or take English language courses so they'll look better at the interview that they're fluent or they can speak English well, and that might be the way to go. Uzo asks, what's happening with the green cards for nurses and doctors? Uh, it's a very broad question because there's diff most, mostly nothing's happening, just the same as, as it's always been. But on certain small angles, they're loosening things up. Um, they're too nuanced to talk here. Uh, it's probably not going to affect anybody who's watching this YouTube video. Very rare. And those who are will already know what I'm talking about. This is in regards to people who are on the J-1 visa potentially or people who have a case pending already uh, at the national visa, at the consular embassy stage for an interview. Uh, but nothing in particular. Uh, if you have an individual question about your own case, please just schedule a consultation and we can talk about it. But nothing grand happening uh, for green cards for nurses and, um, and doctors. Anything then was different than what it was, except again, it's the small aspects of it uh, that wouldn't really affect your case, most likely if it did, just, you know, if you think it is, just cons schedule consultation and we could talk about it. Uh, so unfortunately, yeah, they, the State Department, the Department of State or State Department who runs the embassy system, who runs the National Visa Center, they put out a tweet that said, if you're a doctor or nurse, that we could you know, make everything faster, come and contact us. And I was like, oh wow, so US is opening up to doctors and nurses because of the coronavirus. Uh, and then they have to quickly correct that. And what they're saying is if you have like an embassy appointment pending, please contact us. So these are people who've gone through the whole green card process at their end. They may speed up that small number of cases, not just openly everyone to apply, uh, but they didn't think it through when they sent that tweet or whoever it was typing out that tweet didn't get the information properly. So it got a lot of people excited, um, but it caused a lot of confusion 
Uh, but this is typical of the immigration that we're seeing. Confusion is abound. And that's why I'm here for answering these Q&A sessions so that uh, hopefully I could clear this stuff up. All I do all day is spend time studying immigration law, talking with other immigration lawyers about what's going on. Uh, my JQK law firm page is for my, bit, my law firm, my main business, but I also have a secondary office of business that's for training lawyers it's called the Immigration Lawyers Toolbox. If you look up that YouTube page, um, you'll see I interview lawyers on a regular basis to get the most cutting edge information, different aspects of immigration law. So I'm well prepared for what I'm doing and I try to share that knowledge with other lawyers so they're well prepared as well. Because on a data basis nowadays, I'm getting people bringing up cases to me where their lawyers made massive mistakes. And I hate to, and I don't like to talk negatively about other immigration attorneys, but some of these mistakes that I'm seeing are just ridiculous. Um, you know, they're really ruining people's lives and it's very frustrating when I see that kind of stuff, especially when it's simple enough for them to just catch a YouTube video to get the right answer and they're just saying stuff that doesn't make any sense. It's kind of sad, uh, depressing really. Uh, but uh, you know, in any business, there's those who really care about what you're doing and continue the process of continued education and, and process, but then there's those who don't. Farhad asks, what is rescheduled for interview? It should be interview or approved without interview. Okay, your question is, uh, the sentence is not coherently written, uh, but if they, you know, they may approve it without interview or they may reschedule another time because they cancel interviews for coronavirus, that's it. You just have to be patient to see what happens with your case. That's really the reality of it. Uh, Taiba asks, um, I sponsor my husband back in November 2020, November 2019 with I-130, never heard anything back. Are you seeing Taiba that you didn't get a receipt? We talked a lot about this scenario. We had other questions about this. Please catch the video recording of this, which will probably be posted in two or three days on YouTube. Uh, but you should have got a receipt for the case. Uh, did they cash the check for your case? If they cash the check or accept the credit card fee, that means they're processing it. If you didn't get anything in the mail, call USCIS.gov. It's gonna be difficult for you to do that if you don't have a case number as an individual. Um, so maybe consult the lawyer on how to do that, but try contacting them, saying I did not receive a receipt on my case, the check was cashed when my credit card was charged. Please let me know, I need a receipt number to, to be able to track the case. Um, that's uh, one way to do it. Uh, but uh, it's kind of weird that she didn't get anything. Uh, this is one of the reasons you, you, know, you hire an attorney, because the attorney gets a copy of every document that's sent to you, and that way you have a backup. You know, if my client doesn't get a document, then I get a copy of it, and I could inform them of what the receipt number is, where the case is, and I'll get call on their behalf. So right now, if I, uh, depending on the type of case or issue, uh, I may not be able to call USCIS on your behalf because I'm not on the case. I have to give them documentation, do a lot of work, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so that's that. But you say you did receive a case number. Okay, so then just be patient. Um, it's only been since November. Um, you know, things take longer. I talked about this in, in length earlier that these cases are getting delayed, especially if they're at the ne Nebraska Service Center. Uzo asks, is USCIS running slow on printing and sending out green cards after making payments online? It, it, it just depends on the case. Some cases, yes. Some cases, no. Um, it's, there's no one answer for that. Uh, Taiba, you're welcome. Thank you for asking your question. Thank you for coming on board. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you everyone on TikTok for joining. I uh, really enjoy the community. Hopefully I'll get around to posting more of those one minute videos. I think that gets a lot more attention, but I really like the live just the talking back and forth rather than just talking to a camera one side of the way. Uh, re one of the reasons I love being an immigration journey is I get to deal with people and, and have communication like we're having here. Just talking to a screen with nothing coming back is not as fun for me. Um, Omar asks, can we apply for our parents? So you can apply for your parents' green card if you're a U.S. citizen. And yes, you can start the process filing I-130. Eventually, when they go to the interview, right now there is a travel ban, uh, but we'll see what happens with that. But you might as well start the process um, to get it started um, for, if you're applying for their, for their green card. So you can give it a shot. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen at the end. One is there's travel bans. Two is there's the whole public charge rule that's new. We haven't seen it be adjudicated, the whole public charge kind of cases that started after February 24th. Um, they should start being strict on parents of U.S. citizens unless they can show that they can work, have money, have health insurance in the United States, have education. You really make the consular officer comfortable that when they come here, they're not going to go on insurance or ask for benefits and that kind of stuff, which is a big worry the president had and his people had, which you're trying to avoid. And, you know, parents of U.S. citizens come within that. So I would, if you're interested in applying for parents, you should definitely start the process. Why not? Uh, and then see what happens. There's no guarantees. Probably it'll work out, uh, but we'll see. There's a lot of anti-immigration kind of uh, you know mentality out there. So we're reaching towards the end of it. So I'll take a few more questions. Like I sense my my voice is giving out as well. Um, Farhad asked, six months before we schedule my documents, how long take? 
rescheduled my documents. I'm not sure what you mean, but there's no how long. It's whenever they're ready, they'll let you know. That's a simple answer to that. Your question is not fully coherent, but uh, generally, if you're worrying about how long things take, just wait. And that's all I can tell you. Uzo asks, what happens when the green card isn't sent out within 120 days as stipulated online? There's no deadline for them to set out the green card. Sometimes it takes longer. Hopefully it takes less. I mean, sometimes the mail loses it. If it's taking, um, you know, so there's no official 120 day deadline. Uh, only for citizenship, after 120 days, you can sue them. But in reality, there's no 120 days that they have to approve the case for a green card or that the green card has to be sent out. That's just a general estimate they say to be safe, but it could be much longer. If you feel it's too long, contact USCIS, contact a lawyer as well, contact your congressperson, contact the ombudsman, maybe sue them. So there's these different options, um, but that's the general situation. Omer Z, uh, appreciate detailed answer. You got it. I hope it goes well. If you want to schedule a consultation, we can talk with you and your parents. Uh, what I like to do in consultations is uh, the process is going to take over a year, but prepare everything information-wise that we need from the very beginning so there's less red flags or surprises that pop up later on the process that all of a sudden catch us off guard. So we have a deep consultation at first, try to identify potential issues, clear them up at the very beginning before we even start to avoid you know, starting a process and, and submitting documents and then getting stuck and caught red-handed on some issue. You're not caught red-handed, not doing anything wrong, but for example, I've had cases where um, people couldn't find their marriage certificates or divorce certificates or, or these stuff like that and it took him seven, eight months to get that. So it's better we find that out now and so we have a runway of getting those documents rather than finding out a year from now when they're due and then having to delay things further. So that's what I mean by getting caught red-handed. It's really being caught with your pants down. I thought it was inappropriate to say that on video so I tried to change it up last second. But you don't want to get caught with your pants down. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much. All right, if you have one more question, Omar, okay, we have one or two right here, we'll ask. She says, should we apply for citizenship for myself and kids together or after I become a citizen? Um, your question doesn't make sense. Uh, should we apply for citizenship for myself and kids together or after I become a citizen? It depends on how old your kids are. If your kids are minors, they automatically become citizens. Or if they're adults, they could make their own decision on what to do about that. So definitely, you know, in this kind of case, you've got a lot of stuff going on. Just schedule a consultation and we can talk about it in more detail. Uh, but uh, it depends on the situation where your kids are at, where you're at, all this kind of stuff. And the last question Alexander asked, how hard is it to get an investment visa? I mean, it's not a matter of how hard or easy it is. That you just go through the steps, you prepare, and there's always a nuance of that. It's a complicated, it's complicated, there's a lot of information you need, but to say how hard things are and stuff, it's a subjective thing. It's like, uh, it's hard. If you're investing $50 million in the United States, it's really easy. Uh, well, easy to get approved, but then again, you gotta spend $50 million, so you gotta make sure you have business plans, employees, and co so hard, easy, it, it, it's complicated for sure, but I, that specific, and I, I know you probably don't, you just probably mean how complicated it is, but hard or easy is subjective. Complicated, yes, it's complicated, and that's why usually attorneys handle these kind of cases. If you're interested, we could have a consultation session to review how your case will look like and take it from there. Um, maybe I'll take one more question if we have one. Um, okay, so Omar asked, my question was to apply for a certificate of citizenship. Okay, there you go, more specific. Um, uh, I mean, you, you, your children can't apply for a certificate of citizenship uh, until you become a citizen, so that's that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, but definitely schedule a consultation. That was our last question for today. Mr. Abu, your question is about timelines. I don't give case-specific answers, especially about timelines here. If you like, schedule a consultation in my office, and we take it from there. We got a large group here in TikTok right now. Sorry I have to leave, but we'll be back tomorrow, Friday, last day of the week. Uh, 5 p.m. I might be coming on Instagram and not on Facebook. So if you're watching on Facebook, don't tune in tomorrow. I'm probably going to just switch it up just to keep it fun. I'll do it on, on, uh, on Instagram. Um, my email is info at jqklaw.com. On TikTok, go to my profile page. There's a link tree. You click on that link there, and it'll give you a, a branches tree of different ways to contact me. My email, my website, my Yelp reviews, all these kind of stuff about me will be there where you can access. My email is info at jqklaw.com. I'm Immigration John, Attorney John Pesravi. Thank you so much for everyone joining. I love doing this kind of things, especially when we have good questions. And today was a good question day. I loved it. So thank you all for joining to ask questions. Uh, it, was, it was new stuff. It was fun stuff. Thank you, Omar. Uh, let me punch the name. I said o o Omer. Omer Nazimi. Okay. I thought it was Omar. I'm seeing this from far. Uh, but I appreciate it. Thank you all for joining. We'll be doing this again live tomorrow on TikTok. Uh, on Instagram tomorrow, 
and then uh, catch the videos on YouTube. And until then, God bless. Hope you all stay safe and hopefully we get out of our houses and run our lives after this COVID-19 stuff, hopefully soon. <laughs> God bless everyone. Bye-bye.